Hi, welcome to the Tillamook County Pioneers podcast, for Get to Know Your Local Nonprofit. We're here today with Vivi and Cindy. Uh, they are members of the White Clover Grange. I'm wondering actually if you're on the board and the governing board of the White Clover Grange, and they're here to talk about the Holiday Bazaar as well as the upcoming Pi Day. So without too much ado from me, I will let Vivi and Cindy take it away. Well, I'll, I'll make one answer to that. We're both officers of the Grange. At the White Clover Grange, if you're a member, then you are part of the board. There, There isn't a separate board. So members vote on everything. Um, and we have a vision statement. We have four main goals, which the first is to maintain our historic building which is just over a hundred years old, to provide a venue for community rental use, to establish our status as an emergency warming center, and to support local agriculture and youth programs. So those are the our goals at the group. What a lovely mission. Um, if I remember correctly, Cindy, from our conversation this summer, the Grange has a really special history in terms of its architecture. So I imagine that maintaining the building is a very important part of your mission. Yes. Would you like to, yeah, would you like to share with the audience a little bit about what that is, that background in history? Actually, Vivi can speak to the history of the Grange. I'm fairly new to the organization in comparison to many of the other members. And so the history is fascinating to me, but I don't have as much experience in that area as Vivi does. So, so this building was built in 1920 to be the Moeller Schoolhouse. And at that point, uh, there were a lot more children in that area than there are today. But in 1929, the Nehalem School built its pool and they needed, uh, they really wanted all the surrounding schools to join them to support that new venture. So Moeller was one of the little um, schools that consolidated with Nehalem, leaving that building empty. and. And that building was designed by a man named A.E. Doyle from Portland, um, who had a summer cabin in Neocani. Uh, and he also designed the what is now um, NCRD. So, and you can see th those historic windows, those beautiful view windows. It has a kind of a similar look. So in 1930, the building was empty and the school district sold it to the Grange. And, and the Grange, which had been meeting basically in one form or, or another since 1896, um, then it had a, a real home and it's been there. The Grange has been meeting and uh, occupying that building since 1930. Yeah. That's incredible. The last I drove by, you were choosing paint colors. Have you selected the final paint color yet? The paint colors were selected and new paint is going on and uh, it's looking great. It looks really fresh and, and clean and wonderful. Nice. Yeah. What did you settle on? It's a kind of a, a blue, a darkish blue and white or a cream. Lovely. Cream white. Yeah. Lovely. Very lovely. Well, I imagine that maintaining a building that has such an important historical nature probably requires a lot of resources, both funding and volunteers. I'm wondering if the Holiday Bazaar uh, supports some of these efforts or if that's uh, a, a fundraiser for a different a different aspect of the Grange. I think, I think we're always raising money for that building. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so far. I mean, we've done a lot that has new electricity, but it could use more. We, we could use in some areas to finish out that electrical system so that we can um, really be user friendly for bands that come to play there. Um, but we've redone the plumbing and there's a new insulation and new flooring in the basement and oh nice yeah yeah 
yeah fresh paint in the kitchen yeah it really wonderful really it's such an important community resource. There are so few community meeting places on the coast. And if anybody is not familiar with the Oregon coast and you happen to stumble upon this podcast, we get what, eight, 10 feet of rain a year, something like that. So I think it's 80 inches. Yeah. And on average, so that tends to put a lot of wear and tear on the coast and, and more when you're on 53, it could be a hundred. Yes. Yeah. Could be a hundred. Um, and it's a lot of salt, salty air too. So that really damages buildings, especially some buildings that were built around the turn of the century. So um, you guys are doing really important work, both from a community perspective, but also from a historical perspective. And that historical preservation is really important. Um, why don't we dive into what the Holiday Bazaar and Pi Day is about? Yeah. Well, the Holiday Bazaar brings in local vendors uh, throughout the community that do a variety of different arts and crafts. And um, we have a wreath maker this year. We have soaps and different things like that. And um, and the, the whole community comes out for that it's really really fun event everybody seems to have a great time every year and this year we have a uh, moon river farm with their fresh vegetables which is great and tammy and lance always have their meat we have a couple of raffles raffle off a leg of lamb one of oh, tammy's yeah. legs of lamb and then we have a ring that was found by this couple around here who has uh, metal detectors and they like That's to go yeah. They call themselves the dirt fishers, right? Yeah. Dirt fishers. Oh, that's so fun. I don't, the, the ring is maybe from the fifties, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, and we, we've kind of checked, we've tried to find an owner. Oh, I'm sure that would be so difficult. Ring. So yeah. we're going to raffle it off. That's such a clever idea. I love that. Um, so when is the bazaar? It is December 9th. December 9th. And what time? Uh, what are we? 11 to 3. 11 to 3. 11. Perfect. And for people who are not familiar with the White Clover Grange, I'm sure you can use your Google skills to find it pretty easily. But why don't we give them an address, too, just in case they don't like to look things up? Right. Let's see if we can find the address. It's, it's off Highway 53. It's a mile <laughs> north, just about a mile north of the Molar Co-op on highway 53 on the, on the south side of the road it is it, it has that funny cow statue in front of it remember that i do remember that <laughs> i've only been gone two weeks i can't forget that <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing that attracted me to that building oh. it's um, 36585 highway 20 highway 53 perfect perfect um, it do, does the uh, fair have an entrance fee? No. No entrance fee. So it's really just to support local vendors. Do the vendors then pay a, a vending uh, fee for a vending fee? And then the Grange has a table, and we always sell a lot of uh, sweet treats. And Linda DeGainer makes her famous cinnamon rolls. and. <laughs> And I'm making my not so famous brownies this year. <laughs> <laughs> and oh Annie Bowman makes her caramel corn. Mm -hmm. So there's there's just uh and when we've got the candy cane woman, not candy cane, what do you call it? Cotton candy woman mm -hmm. coming. And um yeah, it'll be and we're doing some kids' crafts. Well fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. And Santa, Santa coming. I don't know. Maybe he'll stop in. Maybe he'll be flying over and stop in. We don't know. Oh, wonderful. Um, so is, I'm assuming it's kid friendly, given the time and the Very day. Very much. Very wonderful. Much. Yeah. Wonderful. How about how many vendors will you have there? Uh, about sixteen. Oh, that's that's going to be a packed house. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, downstairs. Oh, wonderful. So the basement's full too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, well, how does this connect in with Pi Day? Are they they're they're related, unrelated? 
the Pi Days really are big fundraiser. Right. Of the year. So it's two separate events for two two okay. separate um reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Pi Day <laughs> happens. There's a national Pi Day, January 23rd. As distinct to the other mathematical pie day. Oh, which is March 14th. <laughs> so on January, close to that. So this year it's January 27th. And we've okay. done it. This is the 14th pie day. It hasn't always been at the Grange. But um, it's now that is a super fun event. Because we both auction pies. And then we have... A whole table full of pies that does have an entrance fee which i think is ten dollars yeah but then after the pies are auctioned you get to eat all uh, the pie you want all the pie you want and ice cream it's probably a good thing that i am not within driving distance anymore <laughs> because i have been to enough of those pie dates to know that it's more than a good deal. I mean, the entrance fee is barely, <laughs> barely covers the cost of one slice of pie anywhere else. So um, I've yeah. seen incredible pictures from every single year of pie day. And yeah. I've never actually gotten one of the pies because I cannot eat a whole pie myself. But for people- well, You can always it, freeze the pies. Oh, Sorry to yeah, my husband can, bought three can, last year, so I know for a fact that you can freeze the pie. Well, freeze better than others. Not all pies freeze the same. Or or you find a little group of people, even while you're right there, and then you buy it together. That's a lovely idea. Um, in terms of the pie event, like the pie bakers, who what are some names that people to entice them to come? What local bakers, people from restaurants, who who, who are participating uh, by hmm. baking? I think a, a Julie from Buttercup always makes us a, a pie, and that would that's usually a, a savory, like a um, shepherd's pie. I think she made last mm. year, and. Mm. Um, well, Heidi at the Roost usually makes us a Boston cream pie. And Stevie Burden um, usually does some kind of a banana, oh, no, coconut cream. Coconut cream. Oh, oh, that was another one my husband bought too. <laughs> coconut cream. And um, the you same I saw Boston cream pie one year. Actually, the big wave made some lovely uh chocolate i have to look those up anyway they're give me that one we'll, we'll, we'll but they're just there we try and have savory pies too because a lot of people like that a quiche we've had a crab that one of Ooh. our big sellers was a crab quiche from the salmonberry i'm making oh, some called spanish copita pie oh yum that sounds so good with the spinach and the phyllo dough and the cheese Absolutely. yeah and those uh have to be uh, like a savory pie like that has to be made um in a commercial kitchen so we usually find a commercial like a uh, linda de gainer at handy creek has been really she's a long time she comes from a a, a farming family a longtime Grange members, and so she's very generous about sharing her kitchen. Mm -hmm. yeah. For people who maybe aren't familiar with what a Grange is, I know that there are a lot of people who've recently moved to the coast, and they don't necessarily, not only they don't understand the history of the coast, but they don't understand the farming history in terms of why a Grange, what that means, what that term means. Can you explain that a little bit for people? Yeah, that's a, the Grange is a national organization. It was started after the Civil War to support small farmers who had really suffered on both in the North and South because of the war. And, um, but by the late 1800s, it, I, I think of it as kind of the small union or the union for small farmers. And so they really, they really lobbied on behalf of um, rural uh, mail delivery, rural electrification. I love about the Grange that women have always had an equal place uh, with men, unlike other, you know, it's not like the lions or the elks where the women have to kind of fight their way in. But um, 
comes out of that farming tradition. What the women do is just as important as what the yeah. men. Yeah, doesn't really matter during a snowstorm who gets the shuffle out. That that's right. right. <laughs> just somebody. Yeah. Just somebody needs yeah. to get it. So, um, so it's really a, in a way, and also then a social, um, a, a place for people to gather farmers both to help each other but just to socialize and so in the 50s in our grange there were you know they were those local families and farm families were gathering maybe more than once a week and you know having a dance or playing pinochle or having a, a potluck or whatever and and um all across the country, the ranges kind of slowed down then after people got television and started staying home. Um, but now they're kind of gearing up on behalf of of small farms and, um, yeah, and community. Wonderful. And is it, so I'm imagining it's probably too late for people to participate in Pi Day as a baker. Is that... Um, not, not quite. If they really wanted to, they could, uh, they could contact the Grange. We, they could look on our website, www.whiteclovergrange.org. Uh, okay. And they would see all our contact information, but it, it's really info at whiteclovergrange.org. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Is there a, about emails better than phone? Either one. The phone number is right on the website also. It's 5038-GRANGE. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, because there's still, um, uh, we have a volunteer, Evelyn Mast, and she's kind of collecting up all those pies. I mean, you know, we're only going to auction off 25 pies or so. And, and then you can make an apple pie at home but you can't make an apple custard pie at home. You have to find a, a commercial yeah. kitchen for that. So the anything has a with lot dairy regular. or meat, is that correct? Is I'm sorry? Anything? anything with dairy or meat, the, anything that's perishable within yes. X number of days, right. seven days, I think. So, um, I, and I'm guessing that people who would want to participate in Pie Day would be able to get in touch with you and you could give them the exact regulations. They could tell you what kind of pies. Exactly. Yeah, wonderful. we love, we always need, so we, you know, 25 pies to auction. And that's just, you have to be a really a confident, you, you have to know you make a beautiful pie for that. But, but, and Cindy's going to do that this year. I'm going to try it. Yeah. I'm going to try it. Wonderful. <laughs> I always make a pie for the feast table. That's what I've done traditionally. Because that just needs to be delicious, but it doesn't need to be pretty. Um, let's, it, let's give people that pie day date one more time, date and time. Yep. January 27th, Saturday. And do you know the time? Yeah, 2.30 to 4.30. Perfect. So during the day, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and where is that going to be held at the Grange? Yep, that is at the Grange. And that web, that uh, information is also available on the website too. There's now calendar that, uh, that we can update. Perfect. Well, that's wonderful. Um, I'll just say one <laughs> one more thing about oh, yeah. the the last pie that we auction is our zero calorie pie. You just raise your hand if you want to give some money. I got you. That makes sense. I was like, I don't want a zero calorie pie. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, because we will make, you know, we make enough money to, to really um, fund some of our restoration work. So that's great. Love that. um, what's the record for uh, biggest uh, donation at Pi Day? How, how, what's the... That's a good question. Yeah. I, what do you use? I guess? think 800 was the... You mean that that people bid on one pie? Yes. I think I saw one go for eight hundred. Yeah, sometimes That's they can go incredible. for a lot. We're gonna we're gonna raffle off a few pies because it gets beyond a lot of people's pocketbooks. That makes sense. That makes sense. 
Um, so we just have a few more minutes here. Um, if somebody wanted to volunteer for one of these events, how would they get in touch with you? The info at White Clover Grange email? Yeah. 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 Or or you can just call that uh, 5038 Grange. And, Wonderful. Uh, you're going to get you. Cindy. <laughs> And Wonderful. Um, get you in touch with the person who you need to contact. Which reminds me because that number and that info at whiteclovergrange.org gets you also to Cindy because Cindy is in charge of rentals. Ah. So if that's a place you want to have a, a, your birthday party or a wedding, a big family Thanksgiving there. The, the oh, fun. Build the entire Grange building. That was a very, I, I have pictures. It was so really great. awesome. So if you've yeah. got uh, a really large extended family, if you have a anniversary birthday party, any a big event that you can't fit in your house, the Grange is a great affordable option for that. And we have Absolutely. great parking, which is oh. no longer true of the Pine Grove or <laughs> <laughs> or any pretty much anywhere on the developed part of the coast, I yeah, would say. Kind of stand out that way. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what kinds of things would you need help with the most? Um, events or more like construction or um events is a is a a great start um but we'd love to have new members which by which we mean people who really want to you know want to come to our monthly meeting and really help us think out and plan um and just connect with each other i mean there's a there's a lot of um a lot of people in the community that might ne not necessarily be a part of um, any kind of organization. So it's just a very casual, fun environment to be in, to connect with other people in the area where you live. You know, we get off your phone or your computer, or <laughs> your device. Yeah, don't know about, about that. And <laughs> actually talk to a real live uh, person. And there's kind of all little and big things to do. You know, there's there's plenty of of tasks. Wonderful. Um, well, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, if people were going to donate to the cause, um, is there a donate button on your website, or is it more of a yes, cash, yes, cash check? Right. Yeah. Wonderful. The donation would be great. Yeah, very, very easy to do from the website. Or Wonderful. if you want to just call or email, if you want to donate your time, if you have uh, resources that you think the Grange might be able to use, tables, chairs, whatever you you have to donate. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. A generator. We'd love to have a generator. Yes. That, you know... Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if the one of the many lumber stores in the area might be willing to donate. They, your... They've been super generous about helping us with our our upgrade right now. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's fantastic. The businesses in the area will uh, support Pi Day and different events that we have too. They they sponsor those events. Right, we have sponsors. Uh, for Pi Day. Do you want to actually call out by name specifically which lumber store is helping you with the, is, is it both or is there one specific it's one for the renovation? Yep. Nehalem Lumber is particularly helping us with our redo, our, our uh, handicap, our ramp. And um, Dave Stevens at uh, Mansonita Lumber um, has been generous with us about the new siding we've had to install. So they've been great. Wonderful. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love when people help um, I feel like we covered everything, but why don't we just close it with the dates? So we've got, is it the 8th? 9th. The 9th. Saturday the 9th. 11 to 3. 11 to 3. Perfect. And that is the Holiday Bazaar. And then we have January 27th. 7th, thank you. Also a Saturday from 2.30 to 4.30. Yeah. Perfect. And if Perfect. you have questions about that or just need a little reminder, all the information is available on the website. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, this has been the Tillamook County Pioneer. You can see this podcast on our YouTube channel. You can also find it linked directly on Tillamook County Pioneer.net. Um, and this is the 
inaugural kickoff of the second season of our podcast series. So we are always looking for sponsorships for these because we do not ask the nonprofits to pay for the service. And uh, anyone is is open to coming on to this podcast. We we don't stop anyone from talking about their amazing organizations. So thank you so much, Vivi and Cindy. And I look forward to uh, seeing what Pi Day and the Holiday Bazaar brings to the community. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much. Thank Kara. you.